Um, it's a pleasure to be here. Let's start off, I'll start off with a statistic too, because I like statistics very much. Start off uh, with a UNESCO statistic for global education in the tertiary education, universities, colleges, and that sort of thing. In 1970, there were 28.6 million students in tertiary education. 37 years later, the number had more and it had increased more than fivefold, 152.5 million students. And the most drastic change was at the turn of the century, the turn of the millennium, um, where you're having millions of students, 50, 52 million students pumped into the system at tertiary education level. There's been a rapid change in this. And if you're like me, and you believe that the problems facing our society can be combated by having individuals who have education behind them, as we've heard today from our other speakers, it's a hell of a weapon to carry with you, then you're, you're pretty happy about this. And if you're in tertiary education, you know that this step, the step from secondary education to high schools, that sort of thing, into the tertiary education world is a doozy. It's a big step. Your way of thinking changes. Your way of interacting with the world changes. And sometimes you wonder, I'm a college student, I'm a graduate student, an undergraduate student. Um, what can I do? What can I do to increase this flow? Am I at a stage yet where I should worry about it? How can I increase this flow from secondary education into the tertiary education? Um, can I use my, my hedge fund that I have in the back? Or should I sell my Ferrari? Probably not. You're probably not in a position to do this. Um, you're probably under a bit of student debt, in fact. How about your fame? Well, my Twitter following of three won't necessarily help me mobilize this goal either. <laughs> but what I do have, and what everybody in this room certainly has, um, is knowledge is knowledge as a very powerful resource that we can transfer, that we can take over to the next uh, generation, that we can actually interact with secondary uh, level students and help them make the right choices, find the things they care about. So the traditional model will go something, the traditional model goes something like this. You're a graduate student or you're an undergraduate student, you find a college bound student in secondary education, um, and you tutor them, brain to brain exchange, right there. This is true, but there's a lot happening. We saw 152 <coughs> million students in tertiary education. That's a big number. Um, so most likely, that student's not going to be next to you. They're going to be quite far away. You're going to be separated by thousands of kilometers, probably a few time zones. And you're going to have your college work on top of you, too. So there's only a very limited amount of time you can actually dedicate to it. So, okay, you know, we're in the digital age. We've transitioned. We're in a very connected world. So the sort of way forward must be pretty clear. Um, we use the internet. We can use the internet to connect to these students. The distance, the distance is not a problem. Time zones not so much anymore. Um, college work, well, it helps. There's travel time that's been cut down. Um, and you know, that's not such a bad idea. When we look at some statistics, again. Internet penetration. What's happened in the last decade? Just over, just over a decade. In Africa. Look at Africa. In Africa, the internet penetration has increased by 2,500%. Middle East, it's the same thing. We see what's happening there. We see what's happening there with when people become connected. They become empowered. It's, it's happening all over the world. Even developed areas, Europe, North America, they're increasing. They're on the order of 100% increase in their connectivity to the internet. People are getting wired in. And initiatives um, are big. There's this um, the program in Africa, the new partnership for Africa's development, NEPAD. Um, their e-school program that started in 2003 aims to connect every school that's there, every secondary, um, secondary school first, and then moving on to primary schools, to the internet within 10 years. And they're making rapid progress. Part of that is because of that. There are big initiatives out there. You've heard of other ones. You've heard of the One Laptop Per Child project that started, giving kids in the, in the developing world a laptop, teaching them at primary level, teaching them computer literacy, teaching them skills. You've seen the talks in the session itself how um, this is spreading throughout the world. And there are very large uh, initiatives going. So the generations coming up, the next generation of secondary school students are going to be connected. They're going to be computer literate. So this is making, this, is make, this makes um, using the internet as a teaching tool a very, very attractive possibility. The Khan Academy, as has been mentioned before, the Khan Academy picked up on this in a big way. And they've done an amazing job of putting those, putting over 2,000 videos up on the internet where you could learn whatever you want. And as a graduate student, you could do that too. If you can put your knowledge up on the internet, just grab it, just put it up there. Create a video. Create a video if it's something you think you can teach well. Put it up on the internet. Give it to students around the world so that they can watch it wherever they are. 
regardless of whether they're in the classroom, they're traveling with you on a bus stop, or just, just out and about. Give it to them. Give them simple mental models that they can carry with them so that they can grasp the subject. You're not trying to replace their teachers. You're trying to transmit really that connection that made a difference to you. So in 2010, I joined a group of students. Um, right now, there are about 20 of us. Graduate, undergraduate students. And we started doing this. We started putting together our ideas. We have chemistry department, physics department, biology, mathematics. We targeted one secondary school program and started generating learning materials for, for, um, for it based on this very simple, clean, visual learning approach, multimedia learning. They're up there. They're up there on the internet. We launched recently. We launched in September. Um, that's what it looks like. They can get access for now. We can sign in for free. We're trying to keep it free. We're trying our best to keep it free. You have access to these videos. And you can watch them whenever you want to, wherever you want to. So there you go. You connected a secondary school student to the knowledge that you can give to this huge change, this revolution in education that's going on today. But it's a little more than that. Because they're not just, uh, they're not just, just uh, drawings here. The people. It's a human sort of endeavor. Yeah. We want to connect a person to this knowledge. But we also want to connect that person to the students doing the work too. So we are developing uh, electronic classroom technology. We are integrating existing technology, of course, into the platform where you can have these e-classrooms and you can leave one as a tutor. Just connecting people. If somebody has a math question, connect them to a math graduate student. They're on call. We're working on this hard and we're going to launch that quite soon. So the idea is you can bring together, you can bring people in classrooms from all over the world, students who just want to talk about a subject, and you, as their tutor, can enliven this information, enliven the information and make it knowledge, carry it up to the next level. Tell them what it means to you. Guide them, tell them why it's important and why it inspires you, and why, as a graduate student, you dedicate most of your waking life to it. And it will really inspire us. Those millions of students going to tertiary education will go in there with a different kind of drive, not with this sort of dazed confusion, but with a real drive because they've met people working there, not just their teachers, but they've met other young people working in this field. And you have that. We set up this project, we set up this project as a social business. Um, what that means, in a nutshell, is that the project itself, the company itself, doesn't make any profit. Um, we don't keep our profits. Well, we hope we make profits. We don't keep our profits. All the profits that we do make get put into a scholarship fund. And with this scholarship fund, we're working with schools, we're looking for schools around the world to find students who are gifted, who are talented, but can't afford that education. We'll step in. And we'll finish the, we'll, we'll bridge that gap with the scholarship fund that we can raise. Um, this, this of course applies to our own product too. If, at the time, when the time comes, if we have to charge for it, if students can't afford it, we'll find a way. Write to us, if you're a student, write to us and we'll set you up with a connection with Flat Finders Way. The main point is to spread the education and to connect people around the world. So, um, there you go. I, we think that uh, the best way to educate concerned citizens out there is to connect them with concerned citizens today using education as a medium of connection. Um, please visit us, and if anyone in this room is interested in joining, you're more than welcome. So, thank you. Great time.